that I mentioned previously, figure it all out. We do a thing. You're long for the ride. This ain't your first rodeo. Dumb Probably. Phrase. Such a dumb phrase. I mean, it might be your first rodeo. Might be your first rodeo. If so, welcome. Um, you're going to want to wear a helmet for the rodeo portion. I mean, for the podcast portion, whatever. Uh, we talk about, you know, whatever. And then uh, uh, Chris and I try to figure out the topic Allison presents. Usually, we're not successful. Um, it's contributed greatly to our ability to uh, bullshit our managers in our day job. So, has it though? No, not really. But this is what happens when I do intros. Just, I'm just like waiting for someone to interrupt and say, "Yeah, let's go." I'm not sure how long it should be. I don't really know what point I'm trying to make. Talking about rodeos and stuff. I, it's, it's a mess. I feel it's like you would make a really great late night DJ. Of just like someone just, like rambling on, <laughs> but there's no. As I'm like changing out the record. But there's like no sounding board. It's just like you being like, "Hey, what about this?" <laughs> I mean, I was a late night DJ uh, on University Radio when I was in in the UK, and uh, that's kind of that was kind of my that's kind of what I did. Yeah. I feel like Chris would be like, "I was a late night DJ," and uh, get into the chops for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. No, it's very similar. It was very similar to that. Long pauses, mm. not really a direction where you're going. This is a song. I'm gonna play it. You might like I it. I mean, you might not. You might not even be listening. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like if you were, wow, that score was way up there. You don't even look like you can see the outside from the room you're in. It like looks right, like it's glass right there. I know, I know it, does, it does look like it does look like a, I thought he was in the basement. Yeah, I know. I know. Why did I don't know? It's something about the way the ceiling looks behind you. I was just like basement. Yeah, second floor. It's uh, I'm oh, how did I do this? I did. I got an app, and I was trying to use this app to figure out like what the elevation is here as I'm looking out at this tree, because I figure I'm about fifty percent. No, I don't know, a third of the way up this tree. So I'm like, well, I should figure out what elevation I'm at, and I can figure out how tall that tree is. Although, probably a million other ways to figure it out. So I went outside, and I'm like, well, from the ground. Oh, that's what I did. I counted bricks, and then. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it's like 13 feet. I don't remember. This is not going well. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some vines and a uh, squirrel was trapezing from one tree to another on a vine. I need to cut that somehow. That's way the hell up there. That's when you have one of those like weird stick things with the clip at the I, end. I do. I actually have a 26 foot version of that. Whoa. Yeah. But that vine is beyond 26 feet. So I either need to take the ladder out and add another, like, thir like lean the ladder against the tree, climb up 13 feet and get it. If I can't get it then, then maybe. Maybe you should just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not meant to be got. Um, there's a lot of trees that have had um, like vines just smothering them you know, coming up. And so I went out to a tree with like a little handsaw uh, and like lopers and like separated the vines because I don't necessarily want the tree to fall on, you know, people and things that I like. Um, so I did that. And so it's been really fascinating to watch like the layers of the vines dying up the tree over the days. Uh, 
I guess that's I'll fall you, off. And that's how you calculate how much time has passed. <laughs> how dead the vines are. That's dark. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. It's I like it. I, I like it. No, I like it. I like it. This is where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's like probably an intro to a book. You know, four months have passed. He knew it because the vines thirty three feet in the air were dead. What? what? Wow. There's some history that's got to be played out there, teased out over the coming chapters. I've been prepping, prepping for a dystopian present my whole life. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of there. That's the shitty part. Yeah. Like, it's not as cool as I expected. Dystopian present? The dystopian present? I yeah. Mean, we, don't yeah. Have, uh, we don't have the uh, Handmaid's Tale, like, uh, colonies of, of, like, like, women... Who exists for breeding, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not um, there yet. Don't say I mean, yet. <laughs> I mean, if... That if, makes it if, sound uninvitable. <laughs> if, if Donald Trump uh, fulfills his goal of becoming king of the United States, then I, I, we might get there. Um, I mean, Elon Musk, with like the neural thing is kind of worrying me, you know? But yeah. also, how do I yeah. buy stock in that? <laughs> The chip, the chip that goes in your brain. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, that dude turned evil in a hurry, didn't like he? Like 20 years ago, I said out loud with my voice that yeah. if there was a chip that you could put into your brain to make you remember things better, I would be the first one in line. Not thinking that, I mean, I, fi I think I figured probably eventually something like that would happen. Yeah. And I figured probably it would happen maybe even in our lifetimes. But now that it's here, it's like, that's moderately creepy. Yeah, I'm like, where are you in the before. line now? You're like kind of in the latter half of the line, like holding back a bit. <laughs> Look, he's like, you know, like, in the you middle, go to like place, like look, someone's back. like looking at the menu, like, no, no, go ahead. I haven't decided. Yeah, that's yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> it's like, I'm in the middle. But like, if there's somebody else behind me who really you wants, you can go it, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. You already know what you want. Go, go for it. <laughs> because I guess, I guess, when it's a hypothetical, you don't think about uh, the company or the individuals making the thing. You just think about mm -hmm. the thing and the technology. And the thing yeah. and the technology is is interesting and exciting. And I have a bad memory. I'd like to like store some things in a hard drive in my brain. That's cool. But like. I don't know if I want Elon Musk doing it. I don't know if I want Google doing it. Who else is going to do that thing? Microsoft? I don't know that I want them doing it. I mean, maybe, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what company I would trust in my body. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Nice. It's just like no company and you can't separate it from the creator. So I mean, like, yeah, like if, if Google put, made an implant, they would okay. serve me ads in my brain. Let and me if, take back Amazon, if Amazon made an implant, they would like offer me prime <laughs> that's like yeah. basically what they're doing with like home exactly exactly so it's just an extension of like the things they're already doing which is not what i want in my brain yeah 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 i'll i'll take back what i said earlier no this is exactly the dystopian future that 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 i expected <laughs> it's terrible yeah I wanted uh, to make new... it through my 20s, but I, this wasn't what I was expecting when I got, <laughs> when I survived. <laughs> Drat. <laughs> Your door prize. <laughs> Welcome to your It's a non-functional civilization, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, the topic for this week. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> is, let me, sorry, I have way too many tabs open. I was trying to troubleshoot something. Um, the topic for this week is Selkuth. What? <laughs> Selkuth. Uh, Spell that, please. S-E-L-C-O-U-T-H. Okay. It's like a, a, a genre of music. Like, mm -hmm. it's like Enya. Mm -hmm. It like looks Enya. like Enya, or sounds no, no, like Enya. No, that's what it sounds like. I mean, maybe. <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, Enya. 
I listened to some Enya the other day and it was just great. Yeah. Yeah, there's a time and place for that. It was a time capsule of just feeling very, very calm. Right, right before, um, the time for that is right before a conversation about how terrible everything is. So, right. Well uh, and also right after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like after this conversation, I might go listen to Enya. Just, I'm just going to go listen to the wind in the trees and hope that... That's what listening to Enya is like. It is. Covered in vines decides it's time to go. No. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like an illustrated listening to the wind in the trees. Enya. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, got, got some uh, uh, synesthesia in there. Mm. Um, I was going to say Selkuth. about, about the, uh, not about Selkuth. I have a thing about oh. Selkuth, but I was going to say before we were talking about Selkuth, uh, about, uh, the dystopian present, um, that I turned 42 this year and I had a friend who, uh, had for his 42nd birthday, a, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide themed birthday. Oh, and nice. I thought that was a really cool idea because there's nothing exciting about turning 42, other than the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And I thought that might be a cool thing to do. Maybe I could do something like that. Nah, apparently not. Th- <laughs> life says wrong. no. I think the cool thing about turning 42 is that you're around to do it. That's pretty awesome. Sure. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> As in the great words of of uh, the character Wayne from Letterkenny, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know that that was like it was a really nice thing to say, and I totally shat on it. But <laughs> Sorry, right. I was like, my, my dead like vines. An... <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> you could do like an online virtual. Yeah, but online stuff sucks. I mean, and you like, can invite 42 people. As we sit here I and assume. I know 42 people. <laughs> you know yeah. 40. I it's whether or not you want them to be at a birthday it's party. True. It's true. It's <laughs> true, yeah. And a 42-person Zoom is kind of unwieldy. This is true. You have, like, breakout rooms, like, at a real party. Oh, God. <laughs> no, that sounds awful. You're like, oh, this is Allison. Like, I, I don't want to be organizing a freaking 42nd birthday conference. This Virtual is Allison conference. Corner near the snack. Chris Con. Chris Con. <laughs> I want the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Selkuth. So we all know that uh, something uncouth uh, mm. is something that is sort of inappropriate. Yeah. So uh, Selkuth is when you inappropriately try to uh, market something. Uh, you, when you try to market something in a environment in which it is inappropriate. Like if you're trying to sell insurance at a church, like in the middle of the sermon, you're like, oh, by the way, I could totally get you a better rate on your car insurance. <laughs> or like, like, or like yeah. trying to sell, uh, selling like life insurance to- uh, to Like at a funeral home. Yeah, yeah, like, like somebody yeah, who's in like the hospital, week. somebody who's in the hospital, probably for something pretty minor, like, <laughs> But like in the hospital, like checked in, like like maybe it was some sort of surgery and they're just recovering. But like you're just in there, like by the way, <laughs> let me. See you what need some puts to do that? that. But I bet the close rate would be crazy high on that. You know, I bet it would be just like bafflingly high. I don't know that you could look yourself in the mirror after a day of doing that. But <laughs> geez. so so somebody who does that is, is so cool. So I like your your logic. <laughs> Playing on the word uncouth. But I think that Selkuth is, um, like, uncouth is some, saying something inappropriate, inappropriate, not appropriate, whatever that word is, for mm-hmm. the situation. Selkuth is saying, like, only ever saying the most sanitized appropriate things. Like, a person has no, no personality. Everything is so Selkuth with them. So you have it's a, like a so door. You, so you have a you know? range, you have a spectrum. And on one end of the spectrum, you have uncouth. On the other yep. hand of the spectrum, you have Selkuth. And the middle yes. of the spectrum, you just have Kuth. Yes. Yes. So if you're kind of like in betweeny, like you don't say, you, you like you, you're not super, super PC and you're not super inappropriate. You're just sort of like, you know, in, in between your, your Kuth. That person is very Kuth. So Kuth. <laughs> so, yeah. So there, and, and of note here, 
that couth is not the opposite of uncouth. It's, it's in the middle of the spectrum between uncouth and cell couth. So there is a appropriate amount of inappropriateness, yes. which is kind of blowing my mind right now. <laughs> like, did I, was that, was that the appropriate amount of inappropriateness? I don't know. How couth was that? Was that, yeah. was that like, was that couth? Was that okay oh, man. So or that I will uncouth? tell you about some weird uncouth things that happened to me recently. <laughs> we, we had like a, uh, like a team, like, we just had like a, icebreaker question and someone was like oh we need you to keep yourself like physically or mentally sharp right now you know and uh that there was good conversation happening on the side in the chat window as happens in company meetings that's where all the smart asses hang out i would say the chat window is generally uncouth right <laughs> um so someone said something about uh disc golf and then someone else said oh disc golfers are a bunch of uh they said drunk stoners or I don't know, something like that. Uh, and I said, oh, I've been meaning to look into disc golf right around the same time. Fast forward to yesterday when I'm on a call with like uh, one of the partners and uh, like the agency director and stuff and we're having a conversation and uh, there, somebody said something about disc golf and the person that happened to make the comment about disc golfers being uh, drunk or potheads or whatever was there. And I'm like, hey, you have some opinions on disc golf. <laughs> that might've been like the right amount of inappropriateness, but not too much for that context, I think. I think I was perfectly couth in that situation. Anything less would have been cell couth. Well, I'm happy with this definition. I don't know about you, Chris, but I feel good. <laughs> So I've talked myself into it. <laughs> I feel like you walk the line of couthness quite well. I, yeah, my ballet slippers of couthness. <laughs> Couthosity. <laughs> oh, I hope that's what it means. I'm sure it doesn't. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, trying to be take notes. About it. I've been so trying to take notes as we have these when I can remember to do so. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I have spelled out the word couth in, in the editor and it, and it wants to uh, correct my spelling. So I'm pretty sure that that couth as a spectrum is probably not, <laughs> okay. probably not accurate because I think couth might not be its own word, which is really weird. The English language is weird. Why is there something that is unsomething but the something itself doesn't exist? That's, 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 I mean, that, why? That's not a thing. Couth, couth should well, absolutely exist. Probably it does. does that, probably it's archaic. Probably you should go to etym etymology online and find out what couth means. Is that like flammable and inflammable are the same thing? Flammable and inflammable are the same thing? Are they? <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> If it is, that's that's another sort of fascinating thing. I didn't. I are they? There's one of those listeners like of binary jazz. Please tell us: <laughs> is flammable and inflammable the same thing? You can write to us on the website or on Twitter at binary jazz. Um, yeah, and feel free to correct us or me. Always, always feel free to correct us about anything. I thought you were going to say, always feel free to correct Gary about anything. <laughs> always <laughs> feel free to correct Gary about anything. Yep. You can find him on Twitter. Although Gary not much these days. Always wrong. Yeah. Especially on Twitter. Um, yeah, I haven't been Twittering much these days. I've been Twittering more because that is... How do uh, I make this a great view? There, that's better. Because that is the uh, my marketing channel for... for mm, that's a good reason. I have nothing to market. I yeah, it's 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 interesting because it, it does make a difference. I'll see, like, I'll tweet something, and then I see a like I made a sale or two of my my D and D thing, and I realize oh. that if I just tweet about it more, I will make more sales. But I don't do that. I mean, I probably should do it like every day, but I don't. It's out there. It's. it's I think I don't know. A handful of people clicked on the link I shared work it was like 
I went to the D and D channel. I'm like, hi, I don't really know anything about this, but my friend wrote this <laughs> thing and you should totally check it out because he is fantastic. I dropped the link. And then I'm like, all right, so long. Thanks for all the fish. <laughs> <And left. laughs> I like literally. Um, yeah, well, uh, let's see. Let's see where we're at. It was nine. No, it was 15 sales the other day. Do you get the name of the buyers? Do you get any I data? don't get the name of the buyers. Um, I Do you don't get, get their email address? I don't get anything about the person who bought it. Um, I just get, I just get, I run a, the, there's a royalty report that I can run, um, which just tells me like the titles that I have and how many they've sold. Yeah, I'm still at the same. So that's probably means 15. How do you, uh, how do you build your marketing list then? Uh, you don't. <laughs> Oh, okay. um, you have to do that. You have to do that separately, basically. Uh, if you wanted to run a marketing list, you'd have to like. Well, actually, um, yeah, you you would do that. You would you would have to do it separately. You do it like on the twitters or on your page or mm -hmm. like in the book or something. Um, there, we don't get we don't get the emails of of the people. Um, they do they get an email, so they can sign up to be notified when their favorite. Uh, authors publish something however mm -hmm. since or when the favorite publishers publish something but but since most things are published by dungeon masters guild then you just get notified of everything so that's dumb um you can also choose to get notified i think i think it's different on some of the other like sister sites um where they have other people like uh, creating their own publishing houses or whatever and then that makes more sense um uh, but you can also get notified for like um, topics. So if you like tagged a particular setting in your uh, adventure um, mm -hmm. because it took place there, then they would get notified if they signed up to get notified about that setting. And I actually have done that because um, I'm the game that I do on Thursdays with the fam um, is set in the uh, Forgotten Realm city of Waterdeep. So I have tagged Waterdeep as a thing. So I get like little emails every once in a while when somebody's published a new Waterdeep thing. That's cool. The fam. Yeah, the fam. And I'm actually planning on doing that with, with uh, my Red Right Hand adventure, I believe. is going to be an urban adventure. So I figured I'd set it in Waterdeep. Is this then... like the first public announcement of that? Of Red yeah, Right Hand? Yeah. No, but you haven't really talked about your other thing here either, have you? I've, you probably I've, that. I've talked a little bit about it. Uh, I talked about it that it exists. I have a, an adventure on the DMs Guild, uh, a D and D adventure on DMs Guild called the Haunted Circus. And the link will be in the show notes. Sure, sure. Link will be in the show notes. It's an uh, accent has to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's called the Haunted Circus. Uh, it's about. Um, a sort of wandering band of uh, outsiders that have found uh, sort of a, a found family uh, in the circus uh, that is being um, sort of plagued by mysterious disappearances and ghosts and you as the adventuring party who wants to visit the circus because circuses are awesome, um, wanders into this mystery and tries to figure out what's going on and save the circus from destruction because um, if more, if enough of this goes on, then the circus will have to disband because nobody wants to go to a circus that's haunted and people die at. So, um, so there's a lot of like, um, yeah, there, like I spent a lot of time building these sort of outsider NPCs, um, people of uh, various like um, uh, underrepresented groups um, in 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 the NPC cast. Uh, with interesting backstories and yeah. So cool. And the next thing that I'm thinking of writing, I mean, there's two ideas that I have, um, but the one that I've actually written more notes about is uh, Red Right Hand, which is loosely, maybe less than loosely based on uh, the Nick Cave song, um, in which there is a uh, a demon that is masquerading uh, as not a demon, he has a ring uh, that uh, a ring of disguise. Um, so he so he looks like a human, but the, because because of some weird uh, like side effect of of the ring, um, the ring does not change uh, his the hand that is wearing it. So the hand that is wearing it is red. That's how I'm, that's how I'm doing that. So he does have a red right hand, um, but this particular demon uh, likes to sort of he sort of thrives on. Um, sewing 
uh, like temptation and greed and um, and feeding off of uh, people's uh, lust for power. And so he is sort of like a uh, criminal uh, overlord um, that so like pulls for strings. <laughs> no, uh, sounds, well, sounds that, that has actually come up actually in, in, in some of the brainstorming sessions. <laughs> Um, uh, the the idea that he isn't uh, like he he isn't as slick as he maybe seems, and that maybe he's a little bit inept, but he ha he's well connected, um, and and that makes sense because he Such also like this stretch. this particular type of demon that I'm using has these giant like uh, crab like pincher arms. He's got like two normal hands, and then he's got like these giant like crab like pincher arms, and so it 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 fits that he wouldn't be that smart. And he would be kind of inept, but like just really well connected. Because if anybody screwed with him, he just cut them in half with his pincer arms, and there'd be no problem. So everybody sort of like so he sort of rules by fear as well. That's as far as I've gotten. Just like like the idea of like this character, I haven't really figured yeah. out like what the plot is yet. But there's something there. I just need <laughs> to like like it's it's like sweeps the the characters accident like do a job for him unknowingly or something, and it takes them into this like dark and seedy underworld. Mm. This timeline is not ideal. Timeline, just the one we're like in the, right the present now. timeline, the dystopian present. Yeah, yeah. Just, just repeating that point from earlier in the episode, <laughs> in case you weren't paying attention. Hey, did you get your running shoes, Gary? I did. Did you yes. have you used them yet? I have. I have um, run a mile every day since I got them, except for Monday when it was pouring rain. Nice. Yeah. Are you liking it? <laughs> I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, it's short enough, the distance I'm going right now, that I don't feel like totally wiped out. Um, so that's good. Um, I think I like it more when it's a little bit cooler. Like I have to leave it like six to get it in while it's still cool, cool enough out. But yeah, I am. There's something about like starting the day that way and getting the blood flowing that way instead of slamming a bunch of coffee. And then I get home and slam a bunch of coffee. So, <laughs> it all works. And hopefully some water. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, I chug some water, some coffee, some water, coffee. Um, this morning was weird. This morning I, I went out and then I like to like walk when I finish. So I don't, I don't know. It's, I found this thing out years ago. Like if I run and then if I walk for a bit afterwards, like I don't end up having like sore legs or knees or hips or whatever. Like it just, I don't know. It like helps everything cool down in an orderly way. So I ran for like, you know, 10 ish minutes and then walked for about 10 ish more and then came in. I'm like, oh dang, I need to take the dog to the vet today. Uh, and so coffee was being made. I got ready, cleaned up. I'm like, I, I gotta go. So I, I grabbed Tyler and the dog and left having not had coffee or breakfast or anything, just like a glass of water. And uh, uh, it like by the time I got back, it was like eight, oh, it was 8.25, because it was right before the SpaceX launch this morning. Um, Gary and, tells uh, time by, yep. uh, by uh, you know, spaceship launches. That's how, that's how time exists. Well, all right, so sidebar from my sidebar. Um, the other day we were chatting about, uh, it was, it was Saturday. We, were, we we watched a launch, and um, we were talking about uh, SpaceX landing. And Tyler's like, "I remember the first one landing. It was December of 2015." I'm Whoa! Like, yeah, and so I mean, he was five at the time. Yeah. Which, like, the space journey me is like, that's fantastic that you remember that. Um, but I also remember it. I remember I came home from work, and we were going to meet my parents for dinner back when you could go to restaurants. This was five years ago, so. Um, restaurants were a place people would go and buy food. They would bring it up to your table. You would eat like in public instead of hiding. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm like texting my parents like, oh, we're going to be late. We got to watch this. And that thing came down and I, I remember like they, they were using a helicopter at the time to do like some video on it. So to see it come down from a distance and land on the uh, ship was like, the future has arrived. Like, you know, now, now space flight is going to start getting less and less expensive, and it has, and it's gotten more and more regular. Um, I think in 2015, I think there were something like 60-ish launches, and now we're, we're, the last few years were generally above 100 a year. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we'll just keep seeing that rise. And I mean, humanity's access to space has gotten easier, and will continue to. 
Blue Origin might be putting something up next year, the year after. SLS is going to be going up in 2022. I mean, it's like, this is going to be exciting if we all survive everything else that's going on. If there's not a nuclear holocaust. I so mean, you're saying, or, you're saying before the sidebar uh, that you had gotten back from the vet and then that was because it, it was right before the space. Oh, was, so was yes. So my day started at like 9 a.m., but I had gotten up at six and felt like my day was starting at 9 a.m. So I'm like, I lost like three hours and I only went outside and ran and walked for 30 minutes. It was just this weird, like, I did a lot. None of it felt very productive. And nine o'clock, I'm like, I should have just slept in. <laughs> <laughs> but then you would have missed the SpaceX launch. I don't know that I'd be able to sleep that late, honestly. I mean, like, I woke up at 6.33 couple days ago I'm like whew wow really being lazy today <laughs> <laughs> so um Salkuth oh right yeah <laughs> I, have a, I have a job don't I this is just my, nah. my one responsibility um so Salkuth means strange unusual rare unfamiliar marvelous wondrous Okay, so now I really want to know what couth means. <laughs> so it just means like... So uncouth is inappropriate, and selkuth is like strange and wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like super unique. So I think I feel like couth is just normal. Like, That's, is that not is just what I average. said? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I didn't, it didn't occur to me to look up what couth was. Now I'm, now how I'm high, curious. How high can butterflies fly? I don't know. A, a that's, cell that's my question height. for the day, apparently. <laughs> Good question, though. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. Kuth. Kuth is a word. Uh, Kuth means cultured, refined, and well-mannered. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm so if you're uncouth, <laughs> if you're uncouth, you are uncultured and unrefined and ill-mannered because it's the opposite right. of Kuth. Yeah. So Selkuth but now, is but now we have magnificent. This new, now we have Love this that new, word. I don't say now magnificent we have this often new enough. Prefix that we can yeah. put on words that will make them strange and wonderful. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Or maybe just strange. Like, because Kuth is good. Kuth is well-mannered. So like Selkuth is strange and wonderful. So maybe if it was, if it was like, um, I don't know, sell human, you'd just be sort of a, a weird person. Weird, yeah. <laughs> like maybe you've got an extra ear or something. Would, would <laughs> having like, an extra ear? I, I, I mean, so I, 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 apologize, I, no offense to anybody who might actually have an extra ear. Like, I think that is probably a fascinating and, and, and probably a, a, you probably get a disproportionate amount of, uh, uh, weird looks i suppose uh and i would apologize if i have offended any three-eared people um that's not my intent <laughs> i'm, I'm wondering who, i, I like weird are. things i guess what i'm saying is i like weird things uh, if we had any three-eared listeners we would have a very high percentage of listeners that have three ears <laughs> um do you think if you had three years, assuming all three were functional, do you think that would play with um, like locate, like using audio for locating? 100%, absolutely, yeah. yes, yeah, absolutely. You would have a, you'd have would you, more of like a 360 degree range of like hearing a perception. And I think that would absolutely help you like locate where things are, like where sounds Would are you just grow from. up with it and like, just like learn the, and that would just be normal for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Like and then you would have Musk to like, has, like sure, bionic I'm, ear available next year, and I'm I, and sure it's not going to be as as easy for me. I mean, I'll take a third ear because my two are kind of shot. Why wouldn't you want four? Um, because you don't really want one on the front of on your forehead. Oh, I was thinking like like maybe further like back, like paired though. That mm, <laughs> yeah no. I mean, because cause if, cause if we're going off of the normal, like, the human head with the ear here and the ear here, like, I would assume the third ear would be back here. 
So I mean, like, so a fourth one would be right here to go to give you like a full 360. I had not even considered like front and back, but if you go back, like that changes the lobe, lobal situation, you know? I'd rather just have ears that can actually swivel. That's true. Yeah. That does seem useful. Or even, yeah, that does seem more useful. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't commit too much to that, Chris. <laughs> well, we have actual questions, and I, I wanted to make sure that we had time. For can we answer my butterfly question first? Uh, yes. How high can a butterfly fly? As high as that tree that you can't measure. Well, who the hell knows how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, I don't know. I mean, they have to be able to fly pretty high because monarchs travel from like North America to South America every year. Although yeah. I guess it doesn't really mean that they need to try travel high in the air to do that. But I imagine that it's not like, you know, eye level with humans the entire thousand. Well, one would assume that it's above, you know, most naturally and occurring stuff. structures yeah. trees yeah. hills mountains yeah so but at least the it, wind I, I, like yeah i don't that may be helpful for migration though if you knew like where to be what level would take you there quicker i don't know listeners you can write in and tell us what we're wrong about uh, it's like i don't care <laughs> <laughs> someone who's um, a butterfly expert will write in and we'll be like oh <laughs> so we have i'm gonna have to find a netflix show about that we have an interesting uh, email. Uh, we have one from Allison, but the uh, but that's but we haven't. More Not interesting as interesting. Email. I know. I know. I mean, I know. Like, how are you setting this up, Chris? We we <laughs> got a we got a weird spam, and I was reading it before the show. I just looked at the uh, the email address and the mm -hmm. and the URL that goes along with the 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 submission. Um, the name on the email uh, is the same. Sometimes you get these these spams. And uh, the name that, that the person signs off as is different than the name and the email address they, that they fill. And this one is the right one. It's Cassinia Swift, related to Taylor. Um, and Cassinia is a representative of sexru.org. However, oh, Cassinia yeah. is- Cassinia Who doesn't is have that bookmarked? Cassinia <laughs> is talking about uh, Labor Day, uh, how Labor Day is a uh, federal holiday break in the United States uh, celebrate on the initial Monday in September to honor and understand American labor movement as well as operates and contributes to laborers. The event in America is the Monday on the prolonged weekend known as Labor Day weekend. Canada's Labor Working Day is usually celebrated on the main Monday of September. Main Monday of September? Uh, to take full advantage of large quantities of potential customers with time to buy, Labor Day Working Day is becoming a crucial weekend for discount rates and allowances by many vendors in the USA, especially for back again to school sales. Some suppliers assert that it is the largest sale dates on the calendar year, second only to your Christmas times Black Friday. <laughs> what? We have now prepared an outstanding promotional present for you personally at this connection, Bitly address. Uh, in honor of the vacation, we offer wonderful reductions employing considered one of the following advertising codes. Uh, deal with your health and fitness and become delighted. Best regards, sales manager, Canadian Pharmacy, LCC, Ksenia Swift at sex, Magnificent. sexru.org. Can you give me that email just one more time, please? Uh, it's ksenia.swift at sex-ru.org. <laughs> oh, I was missing the hyphen. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, as is our, as, as we do. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.